Welcome everyone to our next show of CFO Inside TV. I'm very happy that you've decided to join us again and I'm also very happy to have with us today Johannes Müller, Chief Economist at Deutsche Asset and Wealth Management, one of the largest asset management groups in the world. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more today about structural reforms in Europe and also um, about growth prospects. Um, welcome, Mr. Müller. Today, or not today, but this week, we, we celebrate the 10th anniversary of um, the Germans' labor market structural reforms, um, commonly known as Agenda 2010. My first question to you is, how much influence do you think those German structural reforms had in actually making Germany so successful? Well, I think uh, those reforms have been uh, essential. They have been very important, especially uh, Opening the labor market, introducing more flexibility in the labor market was uh, really an important step. And uh, you referred to the euro crisis. Uh, I see the euro crisis basically as a balance of payment crisis. And what no one remembers nowadays is that Germany, at the beginning of a monetary union, actually uh, ran a current account deficit. So uh, had basically kind of the same symptoms which we can observe at the moment in a couple of other countries. You, you, you said Germany was a current account um, deficit country and you consider that one of the main symptoms of a crisis. Um, now, we have seen um, current account deficits going, um, reducing um, recently. Is that mainly due to clear structural reforms or is it simply because countries in import less because they consume less? Mm. So it's a little bit of both. Um, so what we've seen is really an improvement in competitiveness in quite uh, some countries. So if you look, for instance, at Ireland, if you look at Spain, uh, if you look at unit labor costs in those countries, we can see some improvement there. And actually exports are picking up in those countries, so that's the positive contribution to uh, rebalancing within the Eurozone. However, um, as uh, domestic demand is uh, depressed in uh, quite a couple of countries, of those countries, uh, there's also a contribution, maybe we shall, uh, shall say a negative contribution from shrinking imports. Mm. We see in, in Italy, for example, that um, they manage to keep export prices comparatively high, whilst export volumes um, are not necessarily um, even stable. They might decline slightly. That's what you mentioned um, before um, in our discussion. So um, are there other countries people think of, I would think of France as well, which traditionally has high, um, um, high quality exports. Does France manage to do the same trick as Italy? Uh, unfortunately not, and uh, in the case of France, we have not seen a turnaround in the current account balance. So I'm looking at those figures on a 12-month rolling uh, uh, average. Yeah. And uh, in the case of France, uh, there is no change in the trend. So the absolute level is not worrying at the moment, but uh, nevertheless, the French current account keeps deteriorating, which is in contrast to countries like Ireland, where we have seen the swing into a current account surplus country, a substantial current account surplus given the size of the economy. We are also seeing a pickup in momentum and improvement in the case of Spain and Portugal. Spain on a 12-month basis, once again, is probably only months away from a current account surplus. Uh, Portugal, I think, has got a reasonable chance to uh, uh, get a current account surplus for this year as well. And we are also seeing a substantial improvement in the case of Italy. So there are some analysts out there who believe that Italy can also deliver current account surplus in 2013 already. Okay. On the other hand, France, unfortunately, is the one country where we haven't seen this turnaround so far. Mm. Now, there's um, a couple of people, especially in the United States, that actually say um, current account surpluses should be limited as well. Um, would, you, would you sign up to that view as well? Is there... Um, too high a level of, of a surplus? I mean, imposing regulations concerning current account surpluses, I think it, that's, that's nuts. But uh, uh, if current account deficits are shrinking, by definition, if we don't discover extraterrestrial uh, oh, right. demand, then also current account surpluses have to shrink. So uh, if we tell import champions to uh, import less, then also export champions will have less to export. So. Mm. And, uh, I mean, a certain amount of uh, current account surpluses is uh, certainly desirable, especially given the demographics of the Western economies. 
Um, however, if a current account surplus is too high, you end up just accumulating green paper. Mm. And that's definitely then not so positive anymore. Okay. Um, maybe a word about central banks as well at the moment, because especially in Europe, um, the European Central Bank has just announced that it will likely keep um, interest rates long, uh, low for a very long time. Um, is there, um, a, how do you see the danger of central banks losing a lot of their political independence due to sustainable low growth prospects? We, we've seen it in Japan, we tend to see it in Europe as well. What's your view on this? Well, uh, what we can observe is a certain shift. So going back in history, we find that uh, usually central banks with, which have been independent and uh, which had a strong mandate for price stability used to outperform in terms of uh, delivering low inflation rates. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, we can also observe that uh, uh, fiscal policy was used, or shall I say abused, for quite some time, not to smoothen the business cycle, but actually to stimulate demand. And uh, fiscal policy is, is quickly approaching its limits there. So just uh, from the perspective of debt sustainability, I mean, the pile of debt is high enough. And what we have learned over the past couple of years in the Eurozone is that uh, also sovereigns can face uh, uh, solvability questions. Mm. And uh, so there is now a tendency to ask central banks to take over from fiscal policy in promoting growth and stimulating growth. Uh, I would be quite critical here. Unfortunately, I'm not the one to decide, and uh, this is a tendency which we can observe. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Murner, for those, for those insights. As always, our um, last three CFO Insight questions with a request for short answers. My first would be, is the Eurozone today any closer to solving its structural problems than it was two years ago? Definitely. And um, will France, will we see in France um, similar structural reforms that we, as we did in, in Germany 10 years ago? Over the next 10 years, yes. Okay. And finally, has the European Central Bank lost its independence for good? Uh, the jury is still out. Okay, we'll see about that in another 10 years as well. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Müller. And thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. I hope you had an interesting time with CFO Inside TV. And I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week for our next show. Thank you very much and goodbye.